on their feet in honor of this vessel of God. Come on. Receive her. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for her. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. And somebody give God praise tonight. that we have never seen before. Amen. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is doing something on our behalf. Amen. For those that can tap in. See, this had to be a clarion call. There were specifically, amen, people who got called and summoned for this particular weekend. Why? Because there's a particular move that God wants to release. And if you don't understand that, amen, then you'll be, amen, looking at things from the wrong eyes. But can I tell you tonight, amen, that the spirit of the Lord, amen, is going to download something in us. Amen. Stay with that same flow. I'm coming back. Stay with the same flow. I'm coming back. And so you have to, you have to understand that the move of God, the move of God is not connotated based upon the earth. But the move of God is connotated based upon the heavens. So when we understand that and we move in heaven's calendar and not earth's, then we understand, amen, that we can flow divinely according to what God is saying. And we have to make an investment to get a return. Come on. Sometimes, amen, we want things, amen, for free. But we got to make an investment to get a return. And so what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that his people who are making an investment, you traveled, you came, you got hotel rooms. Come on. You put yourself in a position so that you can get a return. Come on. And God positioned his people so that there can be an overflow and an outpouring of his spirit. But I need some participation tonight. See, we can't come lazy. Come on, somebody. We can't come dragging. Hallelujah. And you know what? Because most of us in here are leaders, we got to understand, amen, that the Spirit of the Lord is requiring more of us. Yeah. Hear me. The Spirit of the Lord is requiring more of us so we cannot come in on a low plane. Come on, leaders. We can't come in. We got apostles and prophets and pastors and all in here. So we should be shutting this thing down. Come on. There should be an anointing in here so thick. Why? Because we come under Understanding that we're here to receive from the move of God. We're here to receive the right hand of God. We're here to receive the manifestation of God. We're not coming here to play. Come on. We're not coming here, amen, just to be in pain. Because I asked the Lord, do you want me to shut it down? He said, no, because I'm not moved by the earth. What's happening in the earth? I'm only moved by what's happening in the heaven. So I need people who will be tapped in. He said, only people who will hear the clarion call will be able to answer. So a lot of people can't answer because they'll move according to what's happening around them instead of what heaven is declaring. Yeah. So you have to know the difference, amen, and you got to be able to move with the wind. Yeah. You got to be able to move with the wind tonight. So we're going to go a little bit further tonight. I just need you to come on, let's move with the wind just a little bit further. Just a little bit further. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord wants to flow tonight. The Spirit of the Lord wants to put us in position so that we can receive this word. Because this is not an ordinary word. The word of the Lord that he gave to me. I said, God, you sure you want me to talk about that? He said, yes. I want you to release it in the earth. He said, why? Because there's some people who will have an ear to receive. There's some people who are ready to walk in that next dimension. Not just talk about it. But there's some people who are willing to step into a dimension beyond what they have known. So I just need you, amen, declare it out of your mouth tonight. Come on, I need you to declare it out of your mouth. Get it in. 
Gather your hearts in the spirit. That we can go up now. That we can receive what the spirit of the Lord wants to download. That we can open ourselves up now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Men and women of God and even those that are watching online. Come on. Take your mind now. To receive the download of what he has spoken. To receive the download of what he has said. That you be impacted on tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for insight. We thank you for understanding. Father, even as you gave the revelation of the impact, God. We thank you now, Father, that our lives, oh God, he cutting out of the will be forever changed, God. That as this word comes forth, God, that it'll transition us and push us into a new, hey, God, a new sphere. And God, we give you praise for it. God, make me the oracle now that it may release, Father, that which you have purpose to release in this hour. And God, he come out to coast of our time. And God, we give you praise for it now. And we give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hey, We bless you for it now. We reference you in the moment. God, do what only you can do. Now we thank you for your move now. We thank you for your move in this place. In Jesus' name we decree and declare it. Amen and amen. If you're online, hallelujah, just bless the Lord. Send out some hearts. If you're with us, just take your seats for a moment. Let the Lord know, amen, that you are ready to receive on tonight hallelujah i believe glory to god i'm okay for the moment i believe amen glory to god that the spirit of the lord will usher us somewhere today if you allow me to take you this is a word that is very serious a word that can unlock you if you're willing to be unlocked it's a word that has to deal with fears, insecurities, and limitations. My God. That's good. So it has to be something that is dealt with in us to be transitioned into another dimension. So as I was as I was pondering before the Lord and just in meditation, the Lord began to tell me, He said, Listen, He said, I want you to to share this. He said, this is, this is what I've been walking with you in and what I'm trying to perfect you in. I said, okay. He said, but I'm also trying to perfect my body in another place that they have not been perfected in. That they'll be able to comprehend me in a new way. I said, okay. Because we all have perceptions of how we serve God. We have perceptions of how we view God. We have perceptions of how we've grown up or our first encounter with God that may have may have brought amen us in a certain way or a certain alignment of how we come. But then God said, if I'm God, then I can even change that perception. And if I'm God and you allow me to, I can reveal myself in a greater way. So tonight I wanna we're gonna go to Genesis 5 because I I believe it's gonna it's gonna help us tonight to to walk this this word. He cut it under the this word out that will push us. Say it under the Genesis five, chapter twenty, uh, verse twenty-one. I believe it's gonna I believe it's gonna help us. And I I, I said, God, what is it about this word that you want to perfect in us? He said. He says, simply altering your walk. Altering your walk. I said, okay. Altering 
your walk. Mm -hmm. And the Bible reads, Genesis 5, 21, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. Next verse. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Go back to the 21st verse. I want to I talk to you about altering your walk. Altering your walk, what it, what it really takes. And so, so I want you to see this tonight because I want you to comprehend where the Spirit of the Lord is speaking. It says that Enoch here, we know that Enoch, literally, amen, is, is and we only hear very briefly about him. His father's name was, was Jared, amen, and he has a son whose name is Methuselah, right? We, we don't hear a whole lot about him, but as we, amen, tap into the secret place, Right? A secret, amen, is something that is literally not known. A secret is something that is literally not seen. Amen. A secret is something that has to be classified. Right? And it's something that has to be revealed only by, amen, the person who knows it. And so I said, I said, okay, God. So he said that there is literally a secret in this scripture. He, he said that there's there's secrets in this guy. I said I said okay God because we hear about him and we know who he is but we really don't know much about him and so so that he said I'm gonna reveal a secret to you daughter. I said, I said, okay, God. I said, so, so help me to understand this. And so I was looking at this verse, and it says, and Enoch lived sixty and five years. He, he did what he lived 60 and 5. He, was, he lived for 65 years, right? It says, and begot Methuselah. Now, now I want you to see this because any time, amen, we are in our life and we are walking in a particular way, amen, we have to understand that literally we are living. We are, we are making our own plans. We are making our own agenda. We have our own schedule. We have things that we like and things that we dislike. We, we walk in a particular way according to how we want to live. He, he said that Enoch was in a place where he lived. Listen, so he, amen, just like many of us are still living. He, he lived for a long life. He, he was excited, amen, and doing whatever it was that he wanted to do, walking in a process, in, amen, stages and in realms in life, amen, testing things. Come on. He may have said, I want to try this, and I think I like this, and maybe I want to do this particular thing. And so we got to understand that it said Enoch lived before he ever died. See, see, most times, amen, we, amen, talk about, amen, the end of the scripture, but we don't understand the beginning. And so he said most of us are still in this first 65 years. We are living. He said most of us are in the position and the posture where we are still making our own decisions. So it said he lived 65 years. He, he was awakened. He was, he was alive to his own senses, his own emotion, his own will, his own intellect, what he liked, what he didn't like, what he wanted to taste, what he didn't want to taste. Come on. He was an explorer for 65 years. Yeah. He, said, I, he said I'm able to function in my own directive for a long time. Just like many of us, you may know of God, but you're still living. You may, amen, have an experience and, and may you have, amen, heard people talk about God, but you're yet still living. He said he was in a space of living. So a lot of people say, let me live my life. You know what? I don't want to get too deep in God. And we look at Enoch from the end. We don't look from the beginning. He was one that was living. He was, he was, he see, see, we look at the end of the story without understanding the comprehension of where he was. So he took a long time living. Come on. He was one that was resisting apostle. I'm sure he was one, amen, that said, I don't want to answer the call early. See, I, I want to wait a while. See, when, when, you, when you start living life, then you really don't want to be apprehended by the will of God. So he now was in a place that he said, listen, in my 30s, I'm going to do what I want to do. In my 40s, I'm going to try a little bit of something else. In my 50s, I'm going to tap this. Come on, try. In my 60s is when I'm going to start to get ready to settle down. Maybe I'll think about serving God. Maybe I'll think 
about transition in my that's life. Good, maybe, maybe because I'm still living. Yeah. I'm still in the position and in the posture to function in the dimension that I want to walk in, that I, that I want to do. See, see, when you are in this space of living like Enoch was living, he was governed by his own self. See, when you get in a space, amen, when you begin to allow yourself to be governed by your own self, that's when you know that you're still alive. It is not until you come into a movement and a realm where you can allow yourself to be challenged in a realm to say I'm going to submit so it took him 65 years okay, of living to come to a place of surrender and it said that when he was 65 he began he began what Methuselah at 65 years old now you know in our day and time by 65 you should be settling down come on you should be having grandkids you, you should be a man dropping them off and picking them up come on you shouldn't be a man in a space and a time where you still trying to live but you got some people out there that at 65 they still producing y'all you got some people out there so this shows you that they were imperfections in Enoch at the time of being 65. He was still in a state and a realm to say, I still am able what? To have children. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. I'm still able to have son. I'm still able to produce. I'm still going, you know, because it don't even talk about his wife. It don't talk about his family. It don't talk about if people. Y'all don't want to go there. It don't say, come on, that he was legitimate or illegitimate. It just said that he begat. Come on, somebody. Which means his seed was dropped in somebody's womb. And at 65, he brought forth something that he didn't even know that he was going to bring forth. He was living. Enjoying himself, he was, he was having a good. Hey, he was having a good life. He was saying, "I'm just exploring." Hey, and I ain't trying to settle down just yet. Come on, I'm trying to do what I really want to do before I really give myself to God. Because he understood certain principles, but he wasn't willing to, amen, yield to the principles that he understood. See, it's one thing to understand who God is, but it's another thing to yield to what he wants to do. See, it's one thing to, amen, know the word like many people do, and it's another thing to yield to it. So a lot of people know the scripture, know and begin to release scripture, but they don't understand, amen, that the edification of the scripture comes through living it out. Come on. The manifestation of the scripture comes through trans positioning yourself into another dimension huh, so that you are no longer living. Come on. And so most people want to serve God alive. Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. I'll be connected, but let me live. Come on now. You know, let me just go to church. Let me just give you two, two or three hours a week. Let me just and then serve in the capacity that I want to because I still want to make sure that I'm able to begin. I'm able to have what I want to have. So, see, Methuselah was just representation that he still was alive, that he wanted to get whatever it was that he wanted to get. It was just representation that he had not yet surrendered. So he says, I'm going to allow you to beget something to show you what it's like to look at yourself. See, sometimes God allows your seed to let you see yourself in a state of where you are so that you can get yourself together and get yourself in position to die. Come on. Come on now. Wow. This, is, this is this man 65 years old. Ain't ready for an impact. Not even thinking about I'm not really, you know, trying to come into that place. I want to stay in the state that I'm in and I'm enjoying it. You know, one thing about life is that you can enjoy life so much that you can miss the mandate. And so some people would rather enjoy life than accept the mandate because the mandate restricts them. And when there is restriction, you don't want to be restrictions well, restricted, so you would rather be free. Come on, somebody. That's why when some people, God say, listen, go ahead and come off your job. You say, well, no, I don't want to come off yet because I'm living. Come on. I don't want to come off yet because I don't have to be tested by faith. I don't want to come off yet because i got to be challenged in a dimension that I've never been challenged in. I don't want to come off yet. I still want to live. I know on Friday. I know on Thursday. I know every week or every two weeks. I'm talking to somebody tonight. So you don't really want to be challenged to that next dimension. Why? Because you still want to live. You don't really want to depend on God like he tell you to. So we'll carry weight and say, God, I'm 
still living because I, I got to work this thing out. See, God, I got to budget. I got to figure. I got to do this. I got to do that. And so we begin to tell God why we should still live when he's requiring you to die. Come on now. Oh. So it takes a lot of people a long time to live. To come into agreement. He kind of got another little shot to come into agreement with the will of God. You can even know the will. But not want to submit to it. You can know the will but not not be willing. He could have another shot to surrender to it. I remember when the Lord first called me off. Twenty, It's been about 20 years ago now when he called me off out of my career and I was making all kind of excuses and I was you know, trying to live. Come on brother. And I had my plan and I had put everything in perspective and God said I need you to do this. And I said, well, okay, God, let me tell you. See, we'll put a fleet on there. Let me tell you, God, I'm going to go tell my husband because I know my husband probably won't agree because we're going to live. Come on. And so, God, see, we come with stuff to make sure that we have a reason why we want to live instead of die. And so my, and my excuse didn't work. Come on now. When I went home and said, this is what the Lord said, guess what he said? Well, praise the Lord. What day are you getting the home? I said, wait a minute. Something is wrong. I want to live. Yes. Come on. Yes, God. See, Glory Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> See, most partners would have said, oh, no, we're gonna pay. you're going to go back to work tomorrow, baby. Don't put in your two weeks. We got to live. <laughs> But, but, but there's something about a peculiar person that can allow you to hear the voice of God and maneuver in that mandate and fulfill what God says. So I said, okay, so I need to put in these two weeks. Why? Because God is ready for me to stop living. But I wasn't ready to stop living. Yo, I, I still wanted to live even though he wanted me to die. He said, I want to take your source of what you deem to be your source and transition you into a space where you can no longer operate according to your own self. But now you have to be transitioned now to operate according to what I say. Yes. So he says this now. He says most people struggle with going into this next dimension. So we'll be happy to take the title. Give me the prophet. Give me the apostle. Give me the pastor. Give me the bishop. Give me. We want the title. But we want it alive. We want it alive. We want it. Let me... Let me carry it, but don't let me die. Oh. Don't really put me on the altar where I've got to be apprehended. Don't really put me in a place, in a position where I have to transition myself now to yield to the space and the place that you really want me to yield to. Because if the truth be told, everybody in here got something you don't want to let go. Oh. You got something that you still have a lie that you have to let die. And it took him 65 years before he could be transitioned to alter his real walk with God. See, I, I knew this was going to be. I said, God, you know, you do this to me. You do this to me. He said, but I'm trying to get something out of that unless you surrender it, he cut will be wrestling for life. He cut Unless you yield it, unless you unless you just lay down and stop resisting, we'll be wrestling for he cut And you'll be the pastor, and you'll be the prophet, and you'll be the apostle, and you'll be the evangelist, and you'll be the bishop, and you'll be the leader, but you won't die. Come on, come on. So he said. He says, Enoch, hey, Shabbat Takasa, next verse. Enoch comes into this, into this place and it said that now Enoch walk with God. Now, now the difference is when you're living, amen, you're functioning in your own capacity, right? And, and you're doing, amen, what it is that you desire to do. But now when you're walking, it says, and Enoch walked. Come on. With God after he begot. Y'all see this? He didn't walk with him before. But it said he lived and begot. But then after he begot the son, it says now he walked. Y'all see there was something that happened. His actions changed. See, there was an alteration that took place in the spirit now that where he was living, he's now walking. That there was something that transitioned him to put him in a different mind, a different mentality, a different 
the weight of God's glory that now reveals and says, listen, I want you to walk with me. Yeah. So there's a space between living and walking. Then there's a space in two dimensions between living and walking. I said, I said, okay, God, the space of, of people who are living in the space with people who are walking. And we've got people walking and people living in the same place. Come on. So you you have conflict with you got people living and some people walking. Come on. You have conflict because two people, two people walking together can't agree. Why? Because one may be living and one may be walking. Come on. You may have a leader that's walking and people that's living. Come on. So there's always going to be a contrast anytime you don't understand that there must be a transition from living to walking. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I said, wow. I said, he said, so we got two classes of people in the body of Christ. Yes. Come on, come on. Those that are living and those that are walking. That's good. And I said, okay, God, so what does walk really, what does walk really, you know, what, do, what does it really mean? He said, he said, in this sense, it means to follow a certain course of life. He said, it means to transition, to conduct yourself in a way that you had no longer functioned in. See, see, so so when he was living, he was living according to a certain way. But when he started walking, the alteration happened now. Because why? He's now what? Cer a certain course has changed in the functionality of how he was living that transition him into a space where now he has to what? Learn how to walk in a way that he's never walked. Come on. So the course of action changes. In the life. See, when God begins to have a divine interruption and you go from living to walking, then that action, once it changes, it transitions you and puts you in a place now where you have to yield now into a realm where you are uncomfortable, unfamiliar, and don't know the next step. See, when, when you're talking about walking with God, that's when God puts you in a placement where now everything about you, you say, God, I'm trying to understand and I don't understand. See, when you start walking, it is beyond your comprehension. Why? Because it said now, when he walked with God, he and after that, huh, now he begets her, or, or he went through so 300 and, and years and begets sons and daughters. Y'all got to see this. Huh? He's now in a position huh, that sons and daughters are coming for. Why? Because he's walking with God. Huh? When he was in his flesh, he was living, he begat one. Huh? But now he's transitioned to walking. So God said, I'm not just giving you seed. I'm giving you sons. I'm giving you daughters. I'm giving you people who are in a position to function in another dimension. He, he got in position. He, he he was moving now in a realm that he had not moved in. A uh, uh, Second Corinthians five and seven says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, we we know it. We we do what we we walk by faith. See, that's a that's a scripture that we quote, but not necessarily a scripture that we perform. Yes. Yes. Right, right. See, yeah. see, Enoch, when it was talking about him walking, I said, God, see, this wasn't no regular walk. This wasn't put one in front of the other walk. Y'all got see, we read it as it was put one in front of the earth. But he said, no, no, no. He said, I wasn't trying to say that Enoch walked with God. I was trying to say that Enoch's faith was measurable and there was manifestation out of his faith that began to burst something out of him that caused movement. See, see, faith moves you. Come on. Faith thrusts you. Faith enlarges you. Faith pushes you into another dimension. Faith transitions you so that now you are now walking. Come on. You kind of He said, walk well, by faith. You and not by sight. I said, God, what, what is happening here? He said, you don't understand. He said, that's why I keep altering your walk. See, that's why I keep it. You get comfortable and I alter it. Why? Because I'm trying to teach you the dimensions of faith. Yes. I'm trying to put you in a measure that you'll stop moving according to what you know. And the problem is we get comfortable in God. And so we are not willing to be altered. So we really can't walk with God if we're not willing to be altered. That's it. 
see, what I see has to have no relevance to how I move. Come on. That's it. That's it. What, what, I, what I see has no relevance in how I move. So then I'm moving now on water. Why? Because what I see is not what I'm seeing. Come on. So I understand that I'm seeing beyond what I see that transitions me in a space that where I can be altered where other people say, don't you see that? I see it, but I'm still moving. I comprehend it as, you comprehend it as an obstacle. I comprehend it as an avenue or a way, as a portal, as a place to get me into another dimension. I comprehend it in a way that has never been exposed. I comprehend it in a dimension that God trying to unveil a secret to me and I'm trying to get there. And so, so many people back down from obstacles. Come on. Come on. Back away from the obstacle yes. because it makes us uncomfortable. Yes. And we don't want the challenge. Yes. Come on. We don't want the challenges. So anytime I don't want the challenge, then once I don't want the challenge, I'm not able to enter in to the space that God really wants me to enter in. That's why the capacity that you really can hold, you're not even operating in it. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. I said, God, what kind of message is this? He said, what I'm saying to my people, what I'm trying to get out of them. I'm not trying to get out of you, church. I'm not trying to get out of you or to be a people pleaser. I'm trying to get out of you to walk. With me. I'm trying to get out of you to come into a place of faith in a realm that you never tapped into before. I'm trying to pull out of you what's really in you because you don't really know. Come on now. Why does God call events like this? Come on. Why does God say I'm not canceling because he wants to see Come on. whose all wall could be altered? Yes. Yes. He wants to see who was willing come on now. to come in a different way? Come on. Who was willing to now move and be altered so that faith could rise, so that something could challenge and unlock you into a dimension that you had not been unlocked in? So you've got all this in you. Come on, somebody. And you're only giving it church. You got all of these fears in you. And he said he walked with God, not just in church. Come on, somebody. He walked with God. That means everywhere he went, he took authority. He took dominion. He invaded every atmosphere. He said, I've got to make sure that wherever I show up, that God is present. Yes, God. He walked. He just walked. Hey! He just said, I just want you to comprehend what it means to walk. Because my people are excited about faith, but they don't understand what it really is. They don't understand what it really means. You, you know how you really know? Because whatever he requires of you, when you struggle, that's how you know you know. When he requires it and you still resist it, you still alive. When he requires it and you still try to reason, you still alive. When he requires it, he said, oh, you ain't let me walk through you yet. He said, you don't understand. I'm trying to get you in a posture and a position where I can stand up and be God. See, the only way that God can stand up and put us in a posture so that he can be God through us is to allow us to walk with him. And so the, the Bible says in Genesis 1 that Adam walked with God, God. in the cool of the day. He said he, he, was God literally there walking? <laughs> he, he said he walked with God in the cool of the day. Which means there was a space of communion that he said, listen, Adam, you are in such a place that guess what? I can step in and, and work with you and walk with you. Why? Because the operation of who I am is in my purest form. See, see, Adam was in the purest form. So there was no even struggling of God to come and walk with him at any time because there was no impurity. See, it wasn't until he sinned that he was put out because he said, I can't walk with you. Come on. He could no longer walk with him in that state. Why? Because he had diminished the state of the full measure of what God had downloaded. And now we're still trying to get back to the state where God can walk with us. This is not impossible. It is just for people who are willing to alter your walk. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. 
what you doing to me? He said, I'm trying to get you in a new posture. I'm trying to change your posture so that I can develop you to move with me. Now, now, it is one thing for God to sit upon you and then come up off you. Come on, saints. We feel the anointing. He sits upon us. Come on. He rides on us. Come on. When the anointing is here. But it's another thing to be like Adam and to be like Enoch because he walked. Come on, somebody. So it wasn't just a momentary thing. It wasn't something that came as an act of service. It wasn't a, 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 see an anointing that just sat on him. See, see the anointing, you know, is smeared. Y'all know how we know. We know all the words. And so we say the anointing rested. See, but that's okay. It only rested for a moment. Then it was lifted. But when you walk, come on, somebody, there's a place in God that's beyond, amen, an anointing coming for a moment. There's a place in God that has confidence and assurance and trust and reliance that whenever you show up, there has to manifest the very thing that God has decreed. Why? Because God is walking with you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I want to yes. walk again. Come on. Yes. I said, what well, kind? He said, I want to walk again. He cut out a little shot. Come on. He, he wants to allow him. He said, I want to walk again. I said, I said, what God? He said, yeah, he, I want to walk again. He cut out a little shot. I said, God, what? He said, I want to walk again. See, see, you gotta understand. If God is a spirit, but yet he's asking for to walk. Come on. If he's asking to walk, the only way that that walk can manifest is through the people of God yielding to the next dimension so that he can all oh, come. Come on, God don't have legs, but we do. Come on, God, oh, y'all hear me tonight. God is in a positioning that will transition you if you allow him to walk through you. So, so he invades our territory only for us to put it back together. He, he wrecks and tries to come in and shake us yeah. come on, come on. only for us to put it back we put it back together why because we don't understand he said I'm trying to invade you so I can fully incapacitate every part of me I want I want a measure a full measure of every part of me in you come on somebody I'm not just trying to give you a portion of me I'm trying to give you all of me and the problem is we just been happy with the portion and he said no, I'm not trying to give my people a portion. I'm trying to push them into another dimension that will transition my people for the full measure of who I am. So you gotta stop settling for portion. Yes, God. So, you know, you pray one, two, three hours a day. So that's good, God. Because I'm faithful. I'm sick in your face. I'm honoring you. I'm doing what you called me to do. But then there's something when God says, I want more. I said, wait a minute. You want more, and I feel like I'm giving a lot. Most people feel as though they're already giving God what's needed. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And not understanding that, no, you're not giving even what's required. Yeah. So, so we, when he required, when he asked for more, he said, that wasn't even what I really wanted you to do. But that was just a piece of what I was asking. And so I'm asking you to just come at least to the minimum required. Yeah. Come on now. That will transition your life. We pray for things to manifest for us. When if we allow him to walk in us, the manifestation will meet us. Yes. I know that. I know that. I know. You, we can pray for something to come to us. But if we just allow, see, forget praying for things, pray for him. See, see, see let me make it simple. See, so I say, God, help me. I don't want to just pray for the house, pray for the car. Pray, no, 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 no. Help me to pray for you. Because if I pray for you, then you walk in here. Then guess what the law of attraction is? Everything must bow to you. Everything must surrender to you. Everything must come to you. Why? Because now I'm praying for you and not stop. So, 
He said, I was never mm. trying to get my people caught up in things. Mm. That's it. I was always trying to get my people caught up in you. Mm. Yes. I know. Yes. So the struggle is in a generation of where we are. And in a time of where we are, prophet, in a space of where we are, prophet, the struggle is how do you get people to want him? Mm -hmm. Because if you want him, you got to understand that above all else, if you get him, there is nothing he cannot give. But the problem is we're doing it inverted. We're giving the people, say, ask for things and don't ask for him. But if we ask for him, it'll transition us and things will come. Come on. You gotta learn how to transition your people, your mind, your language so that what? You can allow him to sit down in the midst of you to transition who you really are. Yes, God. Okay, give me the next verse. This is the scripture. I said, God, it's, it's, it's breaking me. He said, and then he walked with God uh, next scripture verse. Next, next scripture verse. And then it says, verse 23. And, and then it says, in all the days. Now I want, I want you, I want you to see this. All the days of Enoch. All the what? Days. days. I want you to see this. See, because we run so fast over scripture. He said, in all the days. He didn't talk about the night. But it says in all the days, meaning, meaning that there was something that was working with him in the day. Why? Because the night was never spoke of. The night was something separate. The night was put away for him and God. The night was the secret place. See, see, he said all the days. The days was what's revealed. The night is what's hidden. Come on. So he said all the days were what, 365 years. Yeah, we know we're talking about age, but I'm talking about there is something else in this scripture that you got to see. That he said all the days were what we, you could see. But all the night is what you cannot see. Can I tell you that there's some spaces in the earth realm that the people of God are seeing the days, but they don't know nothing about your night. Come on. They don't know nothing about what's happening behind closed doors. So you can say I'm 50, 60, 40, 30, all the days. Come on. But they don't know nothing about that intimate place. They don't know nothing about the night, the thing that God's trying to unveil, the thing that God is working. So he said, I'm just going to tell you about the days of Enoch. But there's some secrets in me huh, that he walk with me in the night that you don't have no comprehension of. That unlocks some stuff that he had never been exposed to anybody. So it's some places in your day that is exposed for others. But in your night, no man will know. Come on. So in your night. Is the secret place. It's the secret space where God reveals Himself. So you may be a particular age, but we really don't know how old you really are. Why? Because there's something that is happening in the undercurrent. So even though your earthly age speaks of a particular thing, because I said, God, we know in this dispensation they live longer, but there's something that is happening to the people of God who are allowing God to walk with them. They're in position that even though we may be living 50, 40, 30, 70, 80, 90 years, you got to understand that there's still a secret that can be unveiled, that can cause us to be ancient when we're young. There's a secret that can be unveiled that will transition us into another dimension that now I'm carrying a grace that is beyond myself. I'm carrying anointing that is beyond myself. I tap into the ancient space where I'm able to deliver and release the manifestation of who God said he is. See, if I have him in me, that means I don't have to be born when Enoch was. But because I'm connected to the ancient of days, I can tap the realm of what Enoch had. I can walk with God and step in the sphere where the automatic power of the ancient has to operate now. God's trying to transition us so that we no longer operate in this anointing. But we want to operate in the ancient, in the anointing that's beyond ourselves. God trying to transition our minds. Not 
That's why you have the mantle of acceleration. Come on. See, that's why these mantles are dropped in the earth. Yes. So if we take hold of the mantles that are released, then what happens is now we tap into something that's not even a realm that we're in. Come on. But we lay hold of it because we're learning how to walk. Come on. And so in walking with God, it grants you access to something, amen, that you didn't think you should have had access to. It transitions you into another dimension that you say, I don't even own the right. I shouldn't even have access. But because the ancient of days is connected to me. I have the authority that I can transition myself into a realm that I've never been in before. And I can tap now what God's trying to reveal. What he did back then. He said, I can do it now. I need the people who can believe. Come on. See? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who can believe. Yes, Lord. Not know it. See, mm -hmm. but believe it. Yeah. Believe it. He said, because too many people know it. Mm -hmm. But there's no belief. No belief. Mm -hmm. Too many people can quote it, but it's not no. rainbow. No too many people got, you know, they can tell you the Bible from A to Z, but there's no rhema oh. to the word. So when there's no rhema, there's no manifestation. And as long as there's no rhema, you'll quote it until Jesus returns. And you won't get the benefit of it. I keep telling you, it is what you actually access and participate in that what gives you access to step into a place where the power now becomes evident. So it's not about knowing a thousand scriptures, it's about manifesting one. See, see, we can know thousands of words, but if I can't manifest nothing of what I know, it don't mean nothing no way. So he said the word has to be made manifest, and the word can only be made manifest when you walk with me. So I gotta be able to eat it. My he keep telling me, eat the scroll. Eat the scroll. Eat this. So this is not a word I'm just telling you. It's a word I've got to walk out. It's not a word that I'm just here to preach because it's cute. It's a word that is my life story. It's a word that's been prophesied. You'll be translated. Come on, somebody. There's a space where translation happens. I know y'all don't believe me because y'all ain't in that space. But there's a place. And if it's written, it can become rhema to you. There's a space where God is saying if it's written, it can become rhema. He's got to bring his people into a dimension in this last hour that you got to see me and don't see me. And then see me again. You got to hear me. He's trying to transition his people into manifesting a greater glory. You got you to gotta walk with him. I said, God, there weren't many people that walk with you. There were many people that encountered you. Come on. <laughs> so we're happy with encounters, wow. but not with walking. Wow. So I say, God, help me to move beyond encounters. I, I know we love it. The encounters are wonderful. I've had many. He's come to me many times. But I say, God, now he said, I don't want an encounter. I want to bring myself. Because wow. the encounter is a piece of him. But when he brings himself, come on somebody, that's a full measure. So he said, if, if I am in you, then you can contain it. See, people have been taught, no, you can't contain all of God. If he, listen, if he's in you every day and you understand what you have, then you'll understand that the full measure can come out. That's how Peter was able to heal with his shadow, because he came to a full measure. He wasn't trying to do it. It was a fullness that came in him that allowed him to manifest something that he wasn't trying to measure. Now we trying to do it, but it ain't no manifestation because we trying to do it wrong. We just trying to duplicate what we saw without walking. He said, no, no, no. Forget that. See, we, we excited. I want to do like Peter. I want my shadow. That's good. But then you got to walk that way. That's right. That's right. Come on, come on. See? 
It requires another yes. level yes. of walking. Yes. It requires another level of alteration. Yes. See, it, it requires another level of shit. I said, God, you sure? He said, no, 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 because my people. He said, there's some more people out there that got to come on this journey. There's some more people out there that in this dimension have to come in this space to be able to be altered in their walk so that he can release the dimension that he's really trying to release to the body of Christ. Not church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a real impact. Yes. Come on. See, you know how we know we still living? Because we struggle in praising. We struggle in worship. We struggle in emptying ourselves. Come on. We need music to help us. Come on. And not that there's anything wrong with it. Come on, somebody. But you got to be able to come to a place where you and God. Where he said, I can, I can download myself. In the secret place. Hey! So how do, I, how, do I, how do I find out what really matters to God? Because I can do everything that I think is success in the earth. But is that what matters to him? Because yeah. walking with him will transition you now to trying to bring pleasure to him and not pleasure to yourself, not pleasure to the earth, not pleasure to things that you would want to bring pleasure to. But what happens when God says, I want you to come to a space where I can get pleasure from your life? Hey! Come on. I know, I know. I know this, this is difficult. Continues to press. He got a little shut up on us to say, Can you walk with me? I know you want to live, but can you walk? He got a little shut up. Because I've got so much more for you. And walking is so much greater than living. Yes. Can, can I help you? That, that if you allow, Prophet, there was there were spaces where we tapped into, the Lord said to share this just briefly, there were spaces that we tapped into every, where cash was not needed because there was a space in God that when you showed up, Come on now. Yes. There had to be a return. Do y'all yes. hear me? That there are spaces. I can't I can't go all into it, but there are spaces where you can walk in unity with God so much so that it'll say, bing, bing, ching. Come on, stuff will come out your ATM that you didn't put in. Y'all yes. things are happening. You'll be able to go into a dimension. I'm talking about manifestation yes. of walking with God. He'll tell you go on fifth and fourth. Yes. Go on ninth and tenth. Yes. I'm just giving you some shit. I ain't gonna give you no streets in Alabama because I can't tell you that. You go on go on ninth street. Come on and fourth avenue and go to that ATM and slip it. Y'all here we go. And things will manifest. Why? Because he directed you there. And if you're walking with him, it'll be the manifestation of what he spoke. I know, I know that's yeah. It stretches your mind. Come on. To walk with God. Because it has to be a belief. There has to be a belief system. That says I'm willing. To move beyond what I know. So it says. Enoch comes to this space. Give me this next verse. And it will be out your way. He comes to this space. That he's, he's still. You, you see how every verse. He's, he tells you. The days of his life. Then it comes back and says, he walked with God. Yeah. I, I, I'm giving you some equations tonight because he said, you got to understand. He said, these are the days, but he's yet still walking. Come on. <laughs> Somebody will catch that. These are the days, he said, but he walked with God. Now, it never said that he sat down. It never said that he stopped. It said he continued to walk, walk with God. Now, it said all the days of his life was 365. That means in this realm. But then after this realm, he walked. Yo, see, you got to catch the manifestation. See, we're looking at this realm. But it said that after all the days were numbered, he walked to in my God, there's a space in God where you'll never stop walking, where growth will continue to manifest. I said, what? All the days, see, of his life, 
So what was he doing if his life ended? What was he doing now walking again? Come on. Come on. If all the days of his life were 365 days, then how is it that he walked again with God? There was a space in him. Come on. That now it put into his reserve that said these are the days for life on the earth. But let me walk some more. Now I'm walking in dimensions. Enoch is still walking. Y'all better hear me right now. He is not dead. He's alive.
said, since you don't need faith. Since you don't need faith, I don't need you in the earth. I need you over here. See, I got to transition you. Once you need faith, you got to stay here. But when you max out faith, I got to transition you. Death can't even touch you. Why? Because it takes faith to even die. Y'all remember? You got to give up the ghost to die. You got to say, I don't have no more faith. I'm willing to die. I believe I'm going to die. See, it's what you fear that comes upon you. So even to die, you got to have faith. I'm hungry, sir. But he said, you have exhausted every measure. You have let it out. So he said, okay. No longer are you needed in this realm. I need you now in my realm. Hey! Do you know that God is looking for people that he can use in his realm? Woo. Woo. See, I can be effective here, but if I get to a place where I max out faith, he said, I need you on the other side. Hey, I, I, I need you. Why? Because there is still manifestations of growth happening in heaven. Y'all hear me? Huh? That's why Paul said he was caught up. There were multiple heavens because huh? growth is still happening. Teaching is still happening. Manifestations are still happening. So he said, I need a people who can cross over into another dimension. He said, okay, so you cross over. No longer do I need you here. I need you over here so that you can work for me in another dimension. You, you've been working for him on the earth. But now he said, I need you to work for me in the heavenly. I, I want to transition. I don't, I don't I know you I know you helping the saints here, but there's a place that you can play in that'll cross you up over y'all king. There's a place that where the heavens will begin to unveil itself, that'll push you in another dimension. That God will say, catch your own up and play with the angels. There's a place in God that causes us to walk with him that we're no longer needed in the earth. I said, God, I said, God, help me because I'm, God, I, I said, God, help me because we're so earthly minded. And we don't recognize that he has need of people who he can push to the next dimension. That yes, you may be missed in the earth, but you can make a greater impact in the heavens. And you can still keep walking. Come on, somebody. See, the spirit of Enoch has come tonight to help us walk. The spirit of Enoch has come tonight to transition us into another dimension. Why? Because the spirit of Enoch never died. He just moved. Come on. He just translated into another dimension. He just pushed into another realm. He said his spirit didn't leave the earth in transition. The fleshly man transition. But the spirit remains in both realms. Ooh. Do y'all hear what I'm saying tonight? It remains in both realms. So now I have access to both realms. Even though I'm over here, he still has access in the earth. So he can download to us tonight the spirit of Enoch that somebody in this place can catch this and be translated. Y'all hear me? And I ain't talking about just for death. I'm talking about to go in and out of the heavenlies that you will see me and you see me now. Come on. Just like what happened with Elijah. Come on. Why did it happen to them? Because they got the secret. You see these men translating? Because they got the secret. See? They graduated so much so in the earth. Everything it's like maxing out till you get trillions and billions and every whatever the highest number is. So God said, ain't no more numbers. You max out so much, I just need you to cross over. Come on. You 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 max so much in God. Do y'all hear me? That's what he's trying to get us. He said, I'm tired of church. Y'all come on. I'm tired of people playing games. I said, if you come in here, come in here saying, I'm trying to be impacted. Why? Because I'm trying to really be translated to something greater. Not what you know. Wow. Come on. Wipe out what you know. Yes, God. Come on. Wipe out what you comprehend. Yes, Come on. That's why Holy Ghost said, no, let them dance. Open up with the dance. See, we know open up with prayer. God said, open up with the dance. Break it open. See, you got to know what the Spirit is releasing at what appointed time so you can transition into another dimension. Yes. Y'all 
still wasn't ready. Yes, God. Good God. See? Cause Enoch was here. Oh, Say, I want to penetrate the hearts of those who are ready to go to this next. See, my God. So I say, God, I don't want to just be an apostle by name. Come on. See, y'all, I, I even tell people, just call me DeWine, Dr. Jackson, whatever you want to call. I don't want the title. I want the manifestation. Yeah. Too many people want the title. Come on. I could care less about the title. Come on. See, I want to walk with God. Yes. Yeah. So that when I invade your space, yeah. then your life is changed. Come on. I want to walk with God. And when I move, your faith is activated. I want to walk with God until there's a space and a place that I continually eat of him. That you got to taste and see who he is because of my presence has shown up. to take us. Yes. Now, let me give you the revelation of this because he said, for God took him. First of all, this was not just the manifestation that we talk about all the time, him just being crossed over. But the manifestation, let me catch you, let me let me catch, let you catch this. The manifestation was that God took him before he was taken. Mm. <laughs> let that resonate. He took him before he was actually taken. Meaning that he had what? Embodied the full measure of Enoch before he actually transitioned into this space. Hear me. He took him first before his body ever left. My God. Do you hear me? He was already in a space because how do I disappear? It had to be that there was a, a place around him that already what captivated him. That God was saying, I'm working in and through you now so that what I can shift you into the realm. Because people are looking, it happened as though I'm looking at you now and I can't see you. So there was a shielding that was around him. He was already with God. So God said, I'm going to just allow it to be veiled so you can't see. Hear me. So now we can't see him because he was translated. Come on. But he never died. Jesus. Right. Catch that. Catch that. I say he never died. Right. Took he took him. So if he never died, that means he's yet living. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. Yes. Right. Come on. Yes. We just got to tap into the secret to see him. Yes. Come on. Come on, somebody. You, you got to tap into the space to see. Oh, God. So, so that means you can see Enoch if you can see. Come on. That means you can see him if he can. Come on, somebody. If the scales on your eyes can fall off, you can see him. You can have an encounter. You can talk to him. Why? Because he's yet alive. <laughs> Enoch and Elijah. Their spirit is still walking earth. Because yeah. wow. they never die. But only those who have unveiled the secret can see them. Mm -hmm. Only those who understand the mystery can what see them. See, see, it's, it's an unveiling of a mystery that will allow you to see and talk to them. Come on, somebody huh? who have been what translated because huh? they're not dead, so he can walk in here now huh? and sit in one of these chairs, huh? and you won't know he's sitting because huh? unless your eyes huh, have the capability to be enlightened, huh? then he can be sitting right there huh? waiting for you to what come and speak to him huh? and get the mystery of the secret of the revelation, but you won't know it unless your eyes can see. It's challenging you. You got to be able to see. When he says that he wants the scales to fall off our eyes, he wants us to be enlightened to the call of Christ Jesus. He wants us to come into the place. There's a place that your eyes have not seen. Can I help you tonight? You got to see what you couldn't see. And the only way that happens is through meditation. That's the only way because you got to be able to what? Tap into the spirit beyond what you see in the natural. So you got to continue to meditate until you can see him. Yeah. You hear what I'm 
say. That's why the word says that we have to meditate day and night. There has to be a place of meditation. Sometimes you got to be in a space and a place where meditation will begin to unveil. Right? And then you begin to see what you could not see. Come on. And so have you ever been in a space where you meditating? I told the church a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be done. I told them, I said, I was in a place of meditating. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and there was a lion. And the lion was smiling at me. But he was walking around guarding. And I said, oh, my God. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he was walking with me. Come on, somebody. you got to understand that there are spaces where God will let you see. If you will allow yourself to tap into this place, you will be able to see stuff that you didn't know that is walking with you every single day. But you got to be willing to yield your members. There is so much that we haven't tapped into yet. So much. Your eyes got to be open to the next dimension. Hey! Your eyes have to be open for the next dimension. There's so much spiritual activity in here right now. You got to be the catch it. He cut it up Shanda to be opened up to the next dimension. That's why you can't be lazy. You can't be lazy in the spirit, saints. Come on. You can't come in here with a low mentality. Why? Because the spiritual realm, the activity of the spirit is now trying to work with us. And he said, I didn't call you here to be lazy. I called you here so I can bring you into a place. Even as Enoch was, some of you will actually be able to tap into this revelation where the spirit of the Lord will begin to unlock on your behalf where to transition you into another dimension I'm talking to somebody tonight who wants to be transformed God said I want to I want to transform you hey I want to transform you I want to I want to shift you I want to I want to shift my people hey I want to shift them into a place where I can sit down and keep good and able who survive I want to sit down in my hey you talking about limitations being broken let God walk in you you talk about limitations being broken stuff that you can't perform yourself you talk about limitations being broken if you let him walk in you it'll transition you where the spirit of Enoch can come and he can help you to transform and come into this next dimension. He'll talk with you. He'll minister to you. He'll, he'll move. Hey! He'll move in this realm of where I'm trying to take you. He said, I, I'll move you if you're ready to go. But I need a people tonight who are hungry. I need a people tonight who are thirsting for this dimension. I need a people tonight who are ready to go up and say, yes, God, I want you to teach me how to walk with you, God. I want you to come in to the space, God, where I've never been in before. I need you, God, to break off this old mind that the Spirit now can unveil to me who you really are, not according to religion, 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 not according to tradition, but reveal yourself. There must be a revealing. There must be a revealing. There must be. Hey! There must be a revealing. There must be a place where God said, I can sit down. He commanded in the midst of my people now. I need you to just go in the spirit now. I need some people now who will begin to receive from this atmosphere right now. If you're online, come on, wherever you are, just begin to open yourself up to the spirit of the most holy God. Begin to open yourself up and allow God to pour down upon you now. To begin to visit the areas that he needs to eradicate to help you move from the place of living into the place of walking. Hey! There's a place that he desire hey! to take you. There's a place that he desire to move you. There's a place that he desire hey! 
to operate with you. Hey, there's a place that God desires to push you now, to thrust you. That is all may be evident in you. That there'll be an awakening. I decree tonight that there will be an awakening. That the Spirit of the Lord will awaken His people. That the Spirit of the Lord will bring you out of a place where you cannot see and transition you into another realm. He's opening you up right now. Hey! He's opening you up right now. Hey! He's opening you up right now. He's opening you up right now. Come on, let him open you. Let him open you. Let him, let him, let him, let him, let him, let him open. Hey! Let him open you. A word like this takes a willingness and a grace to say God I'm ready whatever you have to kill whatever has to die hey! I want to walk with you I want to walk with you I want to walk with you. Hey! Wherever the limitations are, I want to walk with you. This is a place you nobody can go with you. This is a place nobody can go with you. See, it's a place you got to make a decision. It ain't based upon your spouse. It ain't based upon your children. It ain't based upon your family. It ain't based upon none of them. But it's based upon your decision. Your decision to come in. Your decision to yield. Your decision to say yes. Your decision to release. Hey! Your decision to say, okay, God. Yes, it's me. I'm going if I go by myself. See, you gotta, you gotta come to that place that when other people cannot comprehend, when other people don't even understand, you got to go. When, when other people, they don't understand your relationship, they're not supposed to. It's personal. People can't understand your fervor. People won't understand your walk. They won't understand. When you stop living and start walking, they won't comprehend it. Why? Because alive people don't comprehend those that are walking. There's a transformation that happens. Hey! As you're yielding yourself, there will be a transformation that will just drive you into a place. And even when you think now, I'm going to stop. It'll keep driving you and pushing you. Because you'll keep saying, uh uh, there's something else. There's something else I'm trying to download. There's something else I'm trying to give. There's something else I'm trying to release. So I need a people tonight. A people tonight that can yield. That can yield. That say, wherever I am, God, take me further. You may not be in the positioning and the posture to be where Enoch is, but you are in the positioning and the posture to say, take me further, take me deeper, take me, God, until you walk in me. Wherever you are tonight, you got to yield. You got to yield tonight. Yield in your requirements. That whatever he asks, whatever he asks of you, tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Because there's a purpose. 
There's a purpose to your yes. There's purpose to your yes. There's purpose in your yes. It's pushing you further than what you thought possible. As you're telling them yes, that space. I just need you to cry out to them right there. Come on, just open up your mouth and your own mind begin, amen, to cry out right in your home. If you're here in the sanctuary, just begin to cry out right here in the presence of the most holy God. Just tell him yes right where you are. To the next dimension of grace for your life. To the next dimension of grace for your life. To the next dimension of grace for your life. Tell him yes tonight. I'm willing, God. That's all he needs is your willingness. He needs 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 your willingness. Not your perfection, your willingness. Not that's why he wanted you to see Enoch's life. He's not looking for your perfection. He's looking for your willingness. I just be willing vessels. For all of my vessels were imperfect, but they were willing. He said they were willing. It's not about your perfected state, it's about your willingness. Can you become willing and obedient unto that which he Unto that which I'm asking. For I just need your willingness, my children. I need your obedience, my children. I need you. For the Spirit of the Lord said that He needs you on tonight just like you need Him. He said, I need my people I need my people to be my imprint in the earth. I need my people for I have need of you I have need of you Surrender Surrender my children Surrender, 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 So what I'm asking of you, for what it is that I require, I just need you to yield it. What I'm asking for, I just need you to yield it. I just need you to yield it tonight. Just yield it. 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 Give it to me tonight. Give me yourself. Hey, give me yourself. That that which I'm asking you. To do with you can be performed. That what I'm asking to do with you can manifest. Hey! Just surrender. Come on. Right in that space. Just surrender. Right in that space. Come on. Just take that moment. Take that moment now. Take that moment now. Take them 
moment. Many, 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 many. I would download it. 
Because you have come, become naked before me, my son. You can eat of this. Hey, you can eat of this. Hey, you can eat of this. Hey, you can eat, eat, eat. I see the Lord just stripping you, prophet man. He's just stripping you. There's a stripping happening for you. For you said, I'll give it all. I'll give it all. God said he received your sacrifice. Ah, he received you. As you yielded, he said, I will speak with you in new dimensions. New dimensions for you. Yeah, new dimensions, not the old. But he said, fresh manner will I feed you with. Fresh man, fresh man, fresh man, the spirit of the Lord says, shall be a whirlwind upon you. It shall be a whirlwind. It shall be a whirlwind. It shall be a whirlwind. For he said, I will walk with you, son. This next measure I give to you for your faithfulness and your obedience, for your yielded heart. For your yielded heart, for your yielded heart, for your yielded heart, just lift those hands, people of God. Come on, lift those hands, people of God. He's working for you right now. He's working for you right now. Come here, Prophet Mercy. The Lord said there's a divine interruption. 
a divine interruption. He said, be not afraid of where I'm getting ready to take you. Be not afraid. For it is in this place, seek that I will feed you. Come here, prophet. It is in this place, seek that I will feed you. Hey! I'm getting ready to feed you mouth to mouth. Put your hand on his mouth. There goes this cover. There goes He's feeding you. He's feeding you tonight. He's feeding you tonight. He's feeding you tonight. He's feeding you tonight. The fear is leaving now. The fear is leaving now. Hey, Kaba. The fear is leaving now. Mashiama. 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 He said, eat my son. Hey, eat, 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 hey, eat, 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 the full measure, he had a motion out. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Come on, come on, saints. The full measure, 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 the full measure. The full measure. Maya, come, come quick, come quick. Come on, say, quick, 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 quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He basha. God said a full measure. A full measure. Hey! Oh, Kabala. You don't understand the mantle yet. Oh, the full measure we call for the full measure he said you haven't seen anything yet hey the full measure hey 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 he said you're in the portion but the measure is coming you're in the portion but the measure the measure the measure uh -huh. uh -huh. You gotta step in this grace. 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 Take it. Take it. Come on. All of it. All. God said, all. Hey. All. All. God said, oh, yeah, na, 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 Oh! You haven't seen, you haven't seen who you will become. You're a giant slayer. You haven't seen who you will become. You're a giant slayer. You don't comprehend yet. Hey! Yeah. He said, you're like a David. Yeah, many battles you have fight and win. But the ultimate place is kingship, saith the Lord. Yeah, I'm crowning you tonight. I'm crowning you. 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 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
that is happening tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You've been living, but you're about to walk. Yeah. You've been living, but oh, you're about to walk. Yeah, there it is. Right on the side. He's unlocking it for you now. So shall his. So shall his. For you will receive a double portion, son. You will receive a double portion, son. You will receive a double portion, son. Oh, yes, God. Come on, just worship him. Just worship the Lord. For he is good. Hallelujah, he is good. Hallelujah, he is good. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Thank you. Another empty. Hey! Another empty. Hey! Another empty end. Yes, God. Another empty end. Yes, God. Yes, God. He's emptying you now. He's emptying you now. Hey! Hmm. 
He's emptying you now. We thank you, God, that you're keeping her covered in blood in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As a woman that God was ministering, I was just sitting there and I seen great waters begin to flow. But the great waters came from a dam that busted. 
It was great waters, but it came from a dam that was broken. Go Shabbat and begin to run rapidly. Hey God. See, we need a real impact. Hey God. For many still don't believe. Hey, she even to move to the illustration of what she declared tonight. She said, God took Elijah, but yet the spirit of Elijah came back to John the Baptist. But yet Jesus came on the Mount of Transfer Transfiguration and Elijah Moses is there with him. Understand the words. The realization of what she spoke. God brought Moses and brought him into the ancient of days because when Moses was speaking about Genesis, where the beginning was, he was born in Exodus 2, but yet he was speaking as he was there about Adam and Eve. The ancient of, it has to be in the ancient of days that he was able to reveal this place. The reality of the unlocking. The next dimension. That the prophet was transforming from one mountain to the next. He'll show up somewhere else. Many things we've read, but it's time to walk in. How many ready to receive? A deeper depth of teaching that calls us to give birth to. Because in the days to come, we have to walk in this dimension. You have to be able to be connected to somebody that walk in this dimension. That goes beyond the mind of limitation. Hey, can we give God praise for the word? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The very thing that you've been waiting for all your life of why you were born can be revealed in one day. In one day. Hey, 